Yeah, that's uh, that's an untapped um, answer because we because it's so new. Um, I will tell you that um, most of the analysis out there happens to be stuff that has been quickly published based on the little bit of data that we have. Um, there are certainly patients that have, we know that patients with pre-existing kidney disease have a much higher risk of having a bad outcome if they have a COVID-19 infection. And that may be the kidney disease itself or the underlying disease that gave them kidney disease, such as diabetes, hypertension, obesity, malignancy, rheumatologic disorders, all of those things put patients at risk. And um, there was also a study recently published at, from Mount Sinai where they looked at about 2,000 patients who have um, a very, it's about close to a 40 to 50% risk of, of developing an acute kidney injury, depending on how you define that, from getting a COVID infection, of which about 20% of those people will actually end up on dialysis. Even the ones that recover, we now know that patients that have acute kidney injury down the road have a much greater risk of chronic kidney disease. So in order for us to be able to care for those patients, both from a financial and medical, the resources are gonna be uh, significant. So there is a, a large reservoir of information out there that we still have to analyze, but uh, as a nephrologist who's on the front and you know still seeing uh, half of my inpatient population or so having COVID as as the reason for their hospitalization, um, the uh, the risks to those to that patient population is is significant. Oh, I didn't also mention transplant patients, so they also by definition have chronic kidney diseases, and even though hopefully their kidneys are working well, their immune systems are suppressed by their transplant medications and they have had very challenging um, uh, episodes of uh, COVID-19 infection. Yeah, so um, CKD itself tends to be a socioeconomic uh, disease because it affects disproportionately patients of lower socioeconomic status due to diet, diabetes risk, hypertension, and lack of access to medical care, depending, it, it tends to be geographic in that sense as well. So um, I'm, I'm in a suburban, but next to significant urban area populations, and, and that definitely affects our CKD population. And those patients, are at much higher risk of coronavirus infection due to their access, lack of access to medical care, uh, the need for them to work outside their home, the need to be able to have large families and large gatherings of people just based on their, on their uh, socioeconomic status. So there seems to be a significant uh, social disparity. Uh, one of the populations I, um, I deal with, it has a very large South American population, specifically Brazilian, and there is a much higher risk of diabetes and obesity in that population. And we're seeing a lot of those patients being admitted to the hospital. And if they're being admitted to the hospital, that already means they have advanced COVID infection. And so their outcomes are likely to be uh, more difficult as well. So almost exactly a year ago is when um, things really got a little bit hairy. Uh, what we did is we split our, split our practice up. Um, two of us went to one hospital and the other two went to another hospital. And then we did telehealth for about five weeks, almost exclusively in addition to our hospital care. Uh, that was very, very challenging. Um, it's hard to get direct information. It was very hard to get um, the necessary data on patients, specifically laboratory, blood pressure evaluations, weight evaluation, all of the things that we look at on a very regular basis on our uh, patient population. 
So um, we were very aggressive about making sure we stayed in touch with the patients, uh, particularly our dialysis patients. Our nurse practitioners still made dialysis rounds during that month. Um, but it was very, very challenging. Um, we need resources. I suppose uh, one of the, the, the ways to help better help take care of those patients would be to um, be able to uh, tap into outpatient evaluations through visiting nurse societies, that type of thing. But that requires financial resources, that requires access to the patients. That's a very uh, untapped area. We really haven't gotten that much into it. And it's naive to think that this, even though a lot of people are fortunately starting to get vaccinated, which is a, a huge way of helping to uh, work on the long-term situation, we still need a lot more resources and being able to uh, best care for these patients. So I'm not sure that I, I adequately answered that. I know that it's something that we spend a lot of time thinking about and worrying about. Um, those patients are very unique and they're also very hard to take care of. And so they require more and then we have to give more and that becomes that sort of vicious cycle as to whether or not we're even able to access it and really do what we need to do, both on an educational and a medical. I think education is really, really critical. Um, just because we're able to offer it doesn't mean the patients are able to access it, but we're, we're trying to do a better job on that. 